This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to do a follow-up video on drive chains. If you haven't seen my drive chain video from last week, I'll link to it in the description notes below. This is a proposal. This comprises two Bitcoin improvement proposals, number 300 and 301. And what drive chains proposes to do is to make it easier to add side chains to Bitcoin. In other words, other blockchains that are linked to Bitcoin. Michael Saylor was kind enough to retweet my video, and then we did receive a response from Paul Stortz about my video. And it's a very long response, but I wanted to address some of Paul's points, and I do appreciate him taking the time to respond to my video. He goes on, he begins his tweet by talking about, I made the accusation that drive chains was a bit rushed. And so what he began his tweet with was talking about how he's been working on it and trying to give it publicity since 2015. And this is indeed true. But what I was saying is that the debate has really only gone mainstream, i.e. on Bitcoin Twitter and other related places, only in the past few weeks. So this is still a relatively new debate for Bitcoiners in general, even though Paul has been working on it for, call it, uh, eight years. And I would say those eight years are really just the overture. The real first act of the opera is, is starting now as the Bitcoin community tries to digest these proposals. As we talked about on Friday, Bitcoin is really difficult and slow to change, and that is a good thing. Otherwise, it'd be very easy for a bad actor to change Bitcoin in a way that causes it to self-destruct. One question in my video that Paul did not answer, uh, as far, far as I saw, I asked him, are you open to the idea of rolling out drive chains on a low value chain like Litecoin or Bcash instead? I know that Paul has expressed some sympathy to Bcash in the past. In this tweet from 2017, he talks about how Bitcoin Cash could win. It's cheaper to use and decentralization is completely useless 99.9% .9 of the time. Just hodl both. So my proposal would be maybe we could try drive chains on Bcash instead, because if it blows up something, it's already a failed fork and no one would really care. Trying out drive chains on another blockchain would, in addition, be a great way of seeing how the minor incentives play out in real life without putting all of Bitcoin's economic value at risk. Here's another possibility. Someone like Paul or Layer 2 Labs, which is his company, they could just clone Liquid and set up a side chain using it. And this is one of the things that I'd love to see. There's this question, is there actual demand for sidechains? Does this exist outside the dev community? Obviously, there are a lot of developers who would love to be able to play with this functionality. But is there real a real demand from the market besides the dev community for sidechains? And one reason I ask this question is because we already have a sidechain. The best known sidechain really is Liquid, which is run by Blockstream and has this sort of federated multi-sig model. But this is a side chain that has never really taken off. So the question is, are side chains just something that developers want in order to push forward their, their goals and their privately funded companies like Layer 2 Labs? Or is this something that there's real economic demand for? Now, the response to this obviously is that a setup like Liquid, this is a federated setup where you have different corporations on this multi-sig. And so it's not as decentralized as something like drive chains could be. Members of the Liquid Federation could theoretically collude to steal your money. But my response to that would be, this is like every other DeFi protocol, which usually like Chainlink, for example, has a multi-sig at the center that can be used to change things and rug users. So if you're trying to appeal to altcoiners, to ship coiners with your sidechain, they don't seem to really care about how decentralized it is. You could try out sidechains using something like liquid. And so if, so if uh, ship coiners don't care about these kind of centralization risks on ship coins, they're probably not going to care about it when it comes to a Bitcoin sidechain. So this is an argument for cloning liquid or doing something similar and building out drive chains on that instead or playing around with, with sidechains in that way to see if there's real economic demand. If you just build your own sidechains using a protocol like liquid, which is open source and can be forked, you don't need to bother all of us with your soft fork. And here's the thing that I keep coming back to. What's in it for me? Why are drive chains good for me and for my family? This is one of the great things about Bitcoin. We can all be selfish and say, what's in it for me? And our combined selfishness produces this beautiful product that actually adds a lot of good to the world. So this is the thing I keep coming back to. I don't understand why I need drive chains and why they would be worth the risk of introducing unintended consequences to Bitcoin security to minor incentives, etc. 
when I take a look at BIP 300 and I read the motivation, the motivation is not clear to me. None of these things I'm extremely interested in. Sidechains would allow developers to add features and functionality to Bitcoin more quickly. It would allow developers to add features that are only available on Namecoin and Monero and Zcash, etc. And then there's this argument that basically it's a Bitcoin dominance argument saying that there's all this value outside of Bitcoin that Bitcoin's not capturing. And the rest of the motivation section of the BIP goes on to talk about how difficult it is to change Bitcoin, which in my opinion is actually a good thing. This would say it'd be much easier to roll out these experiments on sidechains. Sidechains allow for competitive benevolent dictators to create a new sidechain at any time. Again, I don't see there's real evidence that people want sidechains. They're certainly not using liquid or forking liquid. And then the end of this sidechain, the end of this um, BIP and the motivation talks about how Bitcoin can copy every useful technology as soon as it is invented. If we have drive chains, scam coins would lose their justification and become obsolete, obviously talking about altcoins. The community can be pro-creativity, knowing that layer one is protected from harmful changes. This doesn't make sense to me. You make the argument that we're going to change layer one so that we don't have to change layer one. As I said, the metric of Bitcoin dominance is not that interesting to me because nothing on coin market cap we've talked about this before comes anywhere close to bitcoin most of the value there outside of bitcoin is in fiat stable coins which have huge counterparty risk they're not good stores of value etc i'm lucky enough to live in the us i have access to fiat through the us banking system so i don't need that and then the rest of the the coins on coin market cap they're mostly proof of stake garbage the large market cap ones and again this is an inherently faulty way of achieving consensus i'm not worried about ethereum hurting bitcoin ethereum is going to implode one of these days just because it moved to a very faulty consensus mechanism so most of these coins are playing a completely different game from bitcoin and are not a threat to bitcoin fiat stable coins trend towards zero in terms of their purchasing power, altcoins trend towards zero against Bitcoin. They've been doing it for many years, even without introducing drive chains. So will drive chains stop ship coins or altcoins? Also, I don't think this is going to happen. The thing, the problem is that Paul in, in this BIP assumes that altcoins exist for the sake of innovation, whereas I would argue that they're not here for the sake of innovation, but they exist so that unethical smart people can print up free money and dump it on uninformed retail investors. And the SEC is slowly putting an end to this, at least in the US. So it's not about the new tech for altcoins and shipcoins or new features. And this is, of course, we know this and can see that this is true because every developer of a new coin or a new tech insists on their own token, which is usually, usually pre-mined, allocated to VCs, or otherwise distributed to insiders. And this is a dynamic that will probably exist forever, even when we're well into Bitcoinization, hyper-Bitcoinization, because scammers will always be around. Hopefully people will get a little bit smarter than they are now. So again, I keep coming back to this. What's in it for me? Why do I need drive chains? Why can't we introduce things like increased privacy, for example, as is being done at higher layers through Lightning, through Fediments, through CoinJoin, through things like this. And I prefer pushing these features and enabling them on higher layers like layers two layer two or layer three over making yet another change to the base layer a soft fork that could completely mess up minor incentives and here's some examples of minor incentives that could be messed up so for example if there turns out to actually be real economic demand for side chains one of these is going to be very successful or a bunch of these side chains on bitcoin will be very successful under drive chains and then at that point it's not going to be an opt-in game as paul asserts basically it's going to be mandatory for revenue reasons because bitcoin mining is so incredibly competitive that any miner or mining pool that doesn't do drive chains in the future if this is approved will lose market share to a pool that does and will not be able to compete on a revenue basis it's just like if all the gas stations around you sell high margin cigarettes you're going to need to do that as well even if you're against smoking and cigarettes if you want to be able to be competitive and not be bought out and not be out innovated by your competitors and this is a problem with drive chains if they're successful everyone will have to do it so that's just one of the many possible unintended consequences of drive of drive chains here's another one if a, if we have a successful side chain after drive chains are rolled out that will mean that bitcoin miners will end up custodying a lot of bitcoin that is being used to peg into that new 
sidechain and provide the backing for it. And this would open up Bitcoin miners or mining pools to being regulated as custodians by governments. We don't want Bitcoin miners holding a lot of money for someone else. They already do this to a limited extent before they pay out members of the mining pool, but that is a much smaller economic value. It's not a huge pool of capital and it moves fairly quickly. But if we have Bitcoin miners or mining pools custodying Bitcoin that is backing, that is being pegged into this new these new side chains, that could open it up to a regulatory attack. So there are a lot of terrible unintended consequences that could happen. And so what I keep coming back to is what's in it for me? Why do we need a base layer change that could have all of these unintended consequences? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.